Hello, thank you for clicking on this video. My name is Dale, this channel is DLJ from PA, and today is a jewelry unboxing video. I decided to do something a little different this time though. It is a more edited video because I tried to get it as condensed as possible and so it doesn't go on forever. And I also gave you some prices if you're interested in purchasing the items directly from me. You can email me at dljfrompa at gmail.com. And if you do bundle more than one item together, maybe we can strike an even better deal than the prices that you're seeing straight out. Shipping will be between three and eight dollars depending on the weight of the items. If you're just getting one or two items, it's probably gonna be like three, four dollars. Um, and then if if it gets too much higher, I can always use a flat right padded envelope, which is gonna be like eight, nine dollars. So we'll figure out shipping, but this is something new I'm trying. So let me know what you think in the comments below about doing it this way. And let's see what kind of jewelry we have today. Today's jewelry lot is another Shop Goodwill auction purchase. And it was advertised as Southwest style jewelry, copper, tribal, three pounds. My auction price was $46. And then with shipping, handling, tax, and a small donation, it was $58 total. Do you know it doesn't cost a thing? The thumbs up. Here is what it looks like. It came in two bags. So we'll just start going through them and see what we have. I'm gonna go through this one first. No particular reason. I did see a few of these style necklaces in the picture. So it is seed beads and it is a cute little pouch. So very well done. And I'm not sure how this will resale, but I will definitely be putting that up for sale. Here is another seed bead necklace with a little pouch on the end. This one, however, has a clasp on it. And I'm just seeing if there's any, hang on, besides the hair, is there any kind of mark? So I'm not seeing any indications that this is silver, but it is at least silver toned and a nice clasp on that piece. So that one would sit up higher, it's not as long. Here is another seed bead necklace. This one isn't a pouch, but it has this interesting dangly with the tassel on the end. Very nicely done and long enough that this one just fits over so it does not have a clasp on it. If you're not subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate if you consider hitting that subscribe button and then hit the alert button so you're notified when I post new content. Here we have a silver tone chain necklace with a spring clasp and a large pendant silver tone. I'm again, not seeing any 925 marks on it with some faux turquoise. And it does look like some of the turquoise beads are missing here. This is a very interesting breed, uh, necklace. And it does have a lobster clasp here and has a tiny little tag on it, which indicates that it is Premier Designs. There's the Premier Designs tag. And you can see that one side of these round beads has turquoise on it. And then the other side has this rhinestone design. This one, that's what those two sides look like. Then we have some of these square ones that have like a raw stone, blue and green colored stone with that similar stone on the other side. So that's a very interesting piece. And because it's Premier Design, I will sell this one and I'm hoping that I'll be able to find the style online somewhere. Here we have another interesting silver and turquoise piece. And if you'll note, this clasp here has a tag that says made for you. And it says that on both sides. And then it just has a hook on it that this 
is what the clasp looks like. I guess maybe can you do it the same way? Yes. So there's what the clasp looks like closed. And then it has this design as you go down and ends in this pendant, which is hollow and it's a little dirty, needs to be cleaned up. But otherwise, I think it's an interesting piece that I will put up for sale. This is a gorgeous pendant that is silver and has almost like a tiger's eye stone here. And then this faceted pendant has almost opal-like qualities underneath it, but in blues and greens. So I'm not sure. I think it might just be a resin piece. It doesn't feel like it's anything super high quality. And this chain has seen better days. There's a lot of wearing here. Um, but I will try cleaning it up and see if this chain tests as silver. Let's test this one with the magnet. And see this necklace is not magnetic. So that is why I think, and it does look to be tarnished up here. So I will test this. This necklace did not test positive for silver. Here we have a funky wired turquoise beaded necklace with more of a green pendant on the bottom. And it is copper toned on the back and copper toned lobster clasp with this tag, but I am not seeing any markings on the tag. There's one side, there's the other side. So I don't see any markings on this tag. Here we have a large triple strand faux pearl beaded necklace. They're all flat and I'm fairly certain that they are not real turquoise. We have a lobster closure and it does appear to be in pretty decent condition. I think it could use a little bit of a bath. We'll see how it cleans up and I'll decide if I'm putting this up for sale or throwing it in a craft lot. Here we have an interesting silver necklace with again some faux turquoise pieces on it and then some random other silver charms and this big bead. And then there's a lobster closure with no maker's mark and like different style chain throughout the piece. So it's, and it's very long, very different and unique. Um, I'll test to see, I should have my magnet out. What am I doing? What am I doing with my life? All right, and this is magnetic. Here we have a very pretty silver and turquoise stoned necklace, angel wings, these pretty faux turquoise pieces on them. They are really trying to be turquoise, but I'm fairly certain they are not real turquoise. And then it just has this clip closure I thought that I saw marks on it, but I don't think that I do. And a long extender. So it's intended, I think, to be a choker, but you can make it a little longer to fit your neck. And it is magnetic. Let's just check the back to see if there's any marks there. I'm not seeing any marks on the back, but I will put this piece up for sale, I think. Right, this necklace definitely has that tribal look, which was described in the description with these black components and then these beads, which feel like they're plastic. At first I thought they were wood, but I'm pretty sure they're plastic. And then the ends, it looks like it is missing a clasp. So I think that I will just put this one in the craft lot. Here we just have a sweet little necklace. This is a very unique necklace with these leaves down at the end, but then a, <clears throat> more of copper tone leaves dangling from the very end. And it just has a simple hook closure up here. 
So this is a very different piece. It is magnetic, but I still think that it is unique and special that somebody would like this, and I'll put this up for sale. Here we have another one of those simple necklaces with the two beads, but then it does have some additional bead details and a barrel clasp. That's the end of our first bag. Let's take a look at the second. Here's another look at our second bag from this lot. Let's start to dig in. There were a number of bangle style bracelets in here that I thought I would just take a look at first. So this one is copper toned and has magnets at the back. So I believe it is a healing bracelet. It's very heavy and I mean, of course it's attracted to these magnets at the back, but I believe this is a really well done copper piece. See how it's braided and it's just, it's very heavy and very sturdy. This one also has a magnet at the back. It's missing the other magnet and it's just generally very bent. It does say 24 karat gold electroplated. So I will check to see what kind of value there might be in this, but it is in such poor condition. I'm just not sure what the value might be. And there is a mark of L on this. I don't know if that indicates anything, but it is noteworthy. This is a stretch bracelet with silver and gold hammered pieces on it. And I'm not seeing any kind of maker on it. So I might either throw this in craft or in an assorted bracelet lot. This piece is very pretty. It's gold with copper and then silver. I can't think of what that is called when it's beads like that, but all wrapped around in the center. And it looks to be handmade if you see the markings on the inside here of where it was finished off. So that's a very pretty piece. I'll do some research to see what the value is on that and we'll be selling that. It needs to be cleaned up a little bit here, but I think it'll clean up nicely. Here we have a silver and turquoise piece. Um, and it does come open like that to put on your wrist. It looks to be pretty tarnished, but I do think that it's real silver and does not seem to be drawn to the magnet. So I will clean that up and list that for sale. I don't see any markings on the back of the turquoise pendant. And the last bangle bracelet feels just to be plastic um, with one of those, friend remember the friendship bracelets that you would make out of embroidery thread? I believe that is what it is covered in. And it's a very cute piece, but again, I, I'll either put this in just a wearable lot of assorted bracelets or into craft. Here we have a pair of earrings on a card that does indicate they are genuine Indian handmade sterling silver and they look to have a piece of real turquoise in the middle. It almost looks like a spider web with a feather dangling down or like one of the dream catchers, but it does not appear to be magnetic. So I believe that these are genuinely the sterling silver. There also is a 925 mark on the hook. Here is another stretch bracelet. Um, I'm a little concerned that the stretch, that the elastic used was not higher quality. And I'm not sure, these beads almost look like they could be real turquoise, but then they're mixed with these other beads. They are cool to the touch. These are not. So it's definitely like really mixed, 
with different items. And this one has pretty glitter in it. Um, but I don't think that I can sell, I don't think I can sell this on its own. So that will go in again, the wearable bracelets or craft lot. Here we have a massive pair of pierced earrings and they are pink with gold and then all the danglies are orange with pink and again golden toned beads. They're very lightweight which is nice because then they aren't so heavy on your ears but boy do they make a statement. Here we have a ring, which I'm very excited about. I do see a mark on the inside. I don't know if the camera will pick that up well. Try to turn it. And let's get out the sizer. It appears to be a size eight. So I believe that would be a men's ring. I don't think that's real turquoise though, but it is still, oop doesn't fit there. <laughs> it is a very pretty ring that I believe is sterling silver. So let's take the magnet to that piece. Getting feathers from the other things in the lot. So right, it does not appear to be sticking to the magnet. So I believe it is real or real sterling silver. Here's another bracelet similar in style to this bracelet. Let me see if there's, yep, there's another one. So I will either sell those as a lot together or again, put them in a wearable bracelet lot. Very interesting. Next we have this bracelet and all of these beads are skulls almost reminds me of a Day of the Dead piece. The stretch on this bracelet, it is only one strand. Is it one strand? No, it is two strands. So I do like that at least it's two strands. Makes me feel a little bit better. And I feel like they could be washed up a little bit because you see some of them are more white and others are dark and look dirty. So what do you think? Should I try washing this a little bit? And are these just dyed halite? What do you think? Here we have a faux turquoise stretch bracelet with a disco ball band. And again, not on a very good quality stretch band. So bracelet lot or craft lot. Here is the last of the lot. And it looks like a lot of earrings that I need to sort through. I think the snow's falling off our roof. Here is a child size ring. Look how tiny that is. <laughs> but it's black. And I think that's just painted enamel. He's tiny. Here we have a copper style bracelet with the Native American Eagle on it. And there is a mark here. It just says copper. I think both sides just say copper. Maybe that says something else. So this clasp pulls apart like so. And then it does push together and is very sturdy. So I like that piece a lot. Next, next we have this cute silver paw print bracelet. And these are like a graduated color, but I think it's just painted enamel. This tag says cool jewels, bracelet lot. <laughs> Here we have two more bracelets that have that same copper style clasp as the other bracelet with the Native American eagles. 
Here we have a silver and turquoise clasped bracelet, which is destined for a craft lot, I believe. It's not very high quality, and I would have to say definitely not real silver. I mean, that seems drawn. These pieces don't seem drawn to the magnet, but I don't believe they're silver, so I'll put the results on the screen. Here we have a pair of pierced earrings with a definite feather feel, tribal Native American style. They are hook style, drawn to the magnet, but they're very unique. So here's another hook style pair of earrings, and it's hard for, it might be hard to see on camera, but they are really not high quality. So I will just put these into a craft lot. Here we have a dream catcher style keychain. Here is a hammerhead style pendant. That's what the back looks like. And I don't think there are any markings. Um, I'll do a little test to see if this is precious metal. Otherwise it will go in a craft lot. This pair of pierced earrings, unfortunately, this pink feather broke off of the one earring, so I'll put them in a craft lot. Here's another hook style pierced earring with a turquoise bead on it. They are very cold to the touch, so I think that might be genuine. And of course, well, it does look like all of the components are attracted to the silver, so maybe they are not. I guess they could be just dyed how light. Here's another hook style pierced earring with all of these natural elements with a fabric tassel and this metal feather. And then it has a shell as well. Here's another pair of pierced earrings with some um, purple rhinestones. And on the back of this one, at least, there appears to be a mark. And I can't tell if that says 925. This does not seem to be attracted to the metal, so that'll be another test. Here's another Dreamcatcher style of pierced hook earrings. And they're very lightweight. So I think those are... Maybe I'll sell some of these earrings as a lot. Here's another silver and turquoise stretch bracelet. Does not appear to have too much life left to it, and I don't see any markings on the backs of these pieces. Here we have a piece which I believe can be a pendant. There's what the back looks like. And I believe this is real silver. I don't know if that middle piece is real turquoise. Oh, and it is attracted to the magnet, so I would imagine it is not real silver. And our last piece is on this necklace on a fabric band with some blue beads, and it ends in a an arrowhead wrapped in wire. I believe that is a real arrowhead. I do not see any maker's mark at this lobster clasp. But I believe that's a nice piece that deserves to be sold.